You gotta keep on breathing If you wanna make sense of it all We will not fall Okay, let's come to seated today and just find a nice comfortable seat, whether it's cross-legged, butterfly, legs out in front, legs out to the side, whatever. Just roll the shoulders up and down, just breathe out as you let those shoulder blades soften down the back, but try not to let the waist collapse here. So keep the waist nice and long and shoulders relaxed. Good. Relax into the hips, the legs, the knees and the feet and ankles and just flip the palms up on the knees and let those fingers gently curl in towards the hands. And this posture, you know, this easy seat or sukhasana, uh, you know, it's supposed to be nice and comfortable. And this is why we do all of our wonderful uh, kind of asana work to be able to sit still for a number of minutes in meditation. That's why uh, the yoga postures were created, was to be able to sit still and be comfortable in this, in this pose. So I know that we're starting off here, but we always return here at the end. So take a check in and just see how you feel this morning. Always honoring yourself, knowing exactly how you feel and uh, tailoring your physical movement and how much effort you put in uh, accordingly. So everything can always be slowed down, modified, you know, taking uh, a lesser strong option. And just find a comfortable breath. Easy breath, samavriti, breathing in and out through the nostrils of equal length. Again, noticing how the breath comes to you today. There's no pressure, stress or forcing of the breath. No judgment or criticism. And yesterday was a new moon. So wouldn't have been able to see it. And it's a time of, you know, intentions and, you know, finding things that, you know, we want to achieve or set goals or how we want to feel. And setting those statements of affirmations and sun kalpas is a great time under the darkness of a new moon. So just for now, just think of an intention you would like for your practice today. Hold that intention throughout your practice, throughout embodied, free flow, creative and improvised movement. In a forest, all forms of life support one another. The soil provides nutrients for the plants and trees, which provide shade, oxygen and food for the animals. Even the animals provide important nutrients and help control overgrowth. Everything works in a precious equilibrium. 
Nature intuitively knows what it needs to thrive, just as your intuition knows what you need most. Spend some time to tap in to your inner wisdom today. Everything you need is within and create space for the answers to be revealed and for you to listen to them. Take a deep breath in through the nose and just exhale lightly through open mouth. Just sigh it out, relax everything, soften the waist, soften the spine. Come into a gentle forward fold, let the chin drop to the chest, let the head become heavy. And just feel here as you pull the navel gently back towards the spine that you're scooping up the front of the body. Let the crown of the head become heavy towards the earth. And feel that stretch in that rounded back. Nice and slowly, start to uncurl the spine at the base, starting to lengthen. Chin stays in towards the chest. Keep it going. And that then lifts the chest, lifts the sternum, lifts the gaze and taking the gaze up towards the sky. You don't have to drop the neck back. So again, just start that initiation, exhaling, rounding, dropping in through the belly, middle, lower back, neck and head. And then uncurling, starting to open and lengthen the spine, lifting sternum, lifting chest, lifting gaze. One more, exhaling, rounding, scooping, releasing. And then releasing, lifting, and opening. Take the hands to the knees, lift the legs together, bring the feet just a little bit wider than hip width out in front of you, and then drop the belly, drop the chest between the thighs and the knees. Again, let the head become heavy here. And the hands just connect down to the feet. Now notice how you feel as you come out of that seated position, which we'd held for about 10 minutes. And then nice and slowly, unroll to an upright position. So sitting about uh, two-thirds of the way back of your mat, you can keep the feet nice and wide there, sitting up nice and tall, hands to the knees, and just gently again drop that belly back. The sit bones scoop underneath and see if you can continue to roll all the way back down to the mat. Now what happens is you might gently lift the toes away from the mat and flex into the feet so the heels stay down and then gently bring the chin to the chest. You might need a little bit of an oomph with the elbows to bring yourself back up. So just nice and slowly roll down. No effort. If you need to bring the heels back a little bit, do that. Or the oomph to get you back up again. (laughs) Nice and slowly roll back down. Draw the knees in towards the chest this time. Keep the belly nice and free of the thighs. Take the knees nice and wide and just roll from side to side. Massage into the spine, the waist. And whilst you're there, just circle the feet one way. See if you can circle both feet one way. So both feet are moving towards the left rotation or anti-clockwise, and then circle them the other way. So again, both feet move in the same direction at the same time. And then pointing, flexing into the feet and the ankles, give the legs a little wiggle and a shake, and then bring the knees in tight. Squeeze the knees in towards the belly and just gently lift the head up towards the knees. Tight, tight ball. 
tailbone lifts away, shoulders lift away, and you pull the forehead in towards the knees. Nice and slowly release, place the soles of the feet down, arms come out into a T-shape, spread the shoulder blades. Let's move head to left, knees to right, exhaling as we do that. Dropping knees, moving head. Breathing in, bringing back into center, all slow, controlled, nice warm-ups. Head goes right, knees go left. Bring it back into the center, Head goes left, knees go right. Take the hand to the top thigh and just bring that knee a little bit closer in towards you. Notice where you start to feel that in the spine or into the outer hip. Pull the left shoulder down nice and gently. Again, no forcing, we're just warming up. And then if you can, extend that leg out. This is where we're going to do that little kind of egg roll. So the top leg opens, opens, opens up. You drop back down towards the mat. The leg continues to open and then eventually it bends. You bring the right leg across. Take the left hand to the top thigh. Give it a squeeze. Pull the knee in a little bit closer towards the chest and then extend the leg and then open, open, open. The body comes back to the mat. Keep that right leg straight and open as long as is comfortable. And then it bends and it comes over to the other side. So speed that up a little bit. Leg extends, open, roll it over, close the knees. Leg extends, open, roll it over, and bend the knees. Find that with the breath. This time we come back into the center, we take the knees nice and wide, we take the feet up towards the hands and lift up into a nice relaxed, happy baby as we rock from side to side. See if you can drop a knee down each side of the mat. From here, this is where we roll up through our happy baby, so give it a big push. Feet come back up and you sit nice and tall. Good. Place the soles of the feet together. Nice deep exhale and just drop the body over once more into that Baddha Konasana bound angle pose. Pull up and let's go into these full ripples. So chest leads, pushing chest forward towards the heels, pull back belly. So ripple, again, just feel how the spine wants to move this morning. Mine's super tight. <laughs> now reverse that. When we come down, it extends to pull up, and then you drop the belly back. So head comes down, you extend, lifting up. And then the belly sinks in a different place. So it's a reverse ripple. Cat and cow. Bring yourself back up into center. Sweep the arms up into a twist. Hand can come back behind you. And the hand goes to the knee. Opening up through the side body. Opening up through the chest and the shoulders. Sweep the arms over in a big arc. All the way to the other side. Here. Come back to the other side once more, right hand on left knee, and just gently drop down to the forearm. So you're going to walk those fingers away from you. Now open up the hips here. Feet might just pull away from one another. Reach the arm up and over. You're going to push through that forearm. If you've got a block, you might need that underneath that arm. Just notice where you feel that. I feel a stretch somewhere in my arm, armpit and chest and gently press through the palm. Bring yourself back. Lifting up left arm and then right arm walks back to where you need to be, coming down onto the forearm on the opposite side. Opening up those knees, reaching that hand back behind you. Nice and slowly. Press yourself up and come back into the center. Sufi circles. So we take the chest to the right knee, 
chest forward to the heels, chest to the left knee, and come back. Do four one way, four the other, and then we send the legs out to the side in a wide leg fold or wide leg seated position. And then we do it with the arms. So get into that rhythm, circling the rib cage and the waist. Nice. All soft, slow freedom of movement with the breath. Remember, exhaling on the release, inhaling on the lift. Send the legs out this time, wide leg. And we use the arms. So lifting up left arm, it goes to the right leg first of all. We sweep forward to the front and open up. Keep it going. Nice, smooth exhale, fold. Remember that navel towards the spine. Inhale, lift. Nice, good. And four times. And we're going to go the other way. So we're getting into arms, shoulders, chest, spine, legs, nice and slowly. Exhaling forward. Inhaling, come up. Last time, the exhale stays in the center and you just place the hands and just feel that wide leg forward fold. Maybe the forearms come down. Just notice again, navel pulls gently back towards the spine, either flexing or pointing in towards the feet, letting the body release down towards the earth. Feel where the stretching might start to come in for you. Again, never forcing anything. We are only warming up. Moment to pause and find stillness. And slowly walk the hands back and then bring the legs together. Give them a big squeeze here. Press the knees together. Swing the legs around behind you and just wherever you are on the mat, come to the back of the mat. So big toes come together. You take a wide leg forward fold. Take time to get into that um, <clears throat> child's pose there. Head might come to the mat or to a block and just rest and settle into the spine, into the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the fingers. Now let's start to move up into tabletop. So we start to move the rib cage left and right, getting a little higher each time. So we're pushing the rib cage to the left and the right sides of the mat. Come up to tabletop, bring the knees into parallel. Find a cat and cow here, inhaling for your cow, exhaling, rounding for cat. If you like, you can embellish this with Adding into the feet, tucking toes for a toe press for cow, pressing into the tops of the feet, rounding for your cat. You might like to move through the arms and the forearms, pulling yourself backwards and forwards. And then nice and slowly come back and reach the right leg forward to the front of the mat. Drop it into a nice low lizard. So again, just find a little bit of wiggle room here. Create the space that you need. Maybe the winged dragon is a nice option for you, turning those toes out using blocks should you need to. Keeping spine nice and long for a moment, so lifting up the chest to the front of the mat, relaxing shoulders, dropping into the hips comfortably. Good. Padding out back knee should you need to. Dropping down onto the palms, blocks, or the forearms. Again, only go as far as your body allows you to do on a, on a Saturday morning. And 
don't think too much about particular alignment or how the body should be. Just drop into how it should feel. So if you're down on the forearms here, you can stay on the left forearm. If you're down on the palm, you can stay on the left palm. But we are going to work that right arm back to give that uh, right knee a little press out. So take the palm to the right knee and then open up your chest. So whether you're on the palm or the forearm here, you're just pushing out that right knee a little bit more. That's it. Perfect. Lovely. So again, this left leg might drop a little bit more. You know, again, just forget about, you know, proper alignment through postures. If you want to drop that thigh down, do it. If that feels good for you, nice and slowly bring the right arm back and then push yourself up and then pull yourself back and sweep that right leg back all the way into your sunbird pose. Taking left arm back to right foot. Open up the chest. Look forward. Press the foot into the hand. Feel expansive. Nice. And then gently release that leg. Left leg comes forward. Again, find that position of nice, low, kneeling lizard keeping chest nice and lifted, shoulders drop down, facial expression is soft, relaxed, little smile. Moving left and right as you need to, coming down onto blocks or onto the forearms or staying on the palms is good. Noticing any differences from the right to the left. Oh, I've definitely <laughs> got a tighter left side today. Good. So always honoring, respecting, supporting, just as nature does. We support our whole body mind and soul. If you're on the forearms, you can stay on that right forearm here, or if you're on the palm, you can stay on the left palm or the block. Take the left hand to the left knee, open it up a little bit. Maybe the gaze goes up towards the sky or it can stay down towards the earth. Again, your neck decides where it wants to go. Try to relax in the pose. There's no tension. If you're facing tension or feeling tension, breathe into it, exhaling. Good. Nice and slowly. Come back. Hands come down and you start to pull yourself back. And then that left leg sweeps all the way around. Big half moon sweep there. Right hand takes left foot this time, pressing up into that sunbird. So give yourself the opportunity to press here through left palm, right foot, right shin. Nice and slowly lower that knee back into tabletop. Right leg comes out to the side of you this time. We're going to come up into a kneeling gate pose. So pad out that left knee if you need to. Toes are in line with your front knee here, lifting up left arm. And you're reaching up and over towards the right extended leg. And then drop it down forward and reach the hands forward, exhaling into a melting heart pose with that right leg out to the side. Nice and slowly, we keep going around in a little circle. Left hand comes out towards the side of the mat. The right arm reaches out and you might just lift the toes and the leg that is extended. Good, nice. And then bring it back. Everything comes back into tabletop and you extend the left. Lifting up. Let's do that lateral stretch to gate pose first of all. So reaching over to your left extended leg. Try to keep the hip nice and lifted on the right side, not dumping into it. 
circle it forward, the hips drop back a touch, and then the arms come forward, you melt it into that heart pose with the leg extended. Lift up a little, and then you start circling the arms around to the right side of the mat, right arm comes down, and this is where you just lift the left, and maybe the left leg lifts. My face is right in my plant here. Oh, that's good. Nice and slowly release the leg, release the arm, come back into tabletop, and then tuck the toes. Pedal out through your downward facing dog, giving yourself that release through the sides of the body and through the back of the legs and the spine. Come up onto the tiptoes, pressing arches forward, pressing chest back towards the thighs on tiptoes, and then gently releasing a heel and the opposite heel. Take the feet nice and wide of your mat and see if you can shorten your down dog so that your heels do come down and your arms come back just a little bit shorter. Again, bending into the knees, nice softness there. Notice if the knees rock in towards one another, if they're internally coming in towards the mat, or if you can, use your inner thighs to keep those knees nice and wide. From here, we're going to keep the right arm just a little bit into the center of the mat. We're going to take the left arm up towards the sacrum. Give that sacrum a little press. We're in a, a short down dog. Now, from here, you might lift the, yes, left leg. Tiny, tiny, tiny lift, okay? Whoa. It's a bit tricky. Might be the other leg, actually. No, it is. Sorry, it's the right leg. <laughs> it's right leg. <laughs> left foot stays down. So your hand is on the sacrum. Ooh. And you might take hold of that back foot as it pulls in towards the buttock. Give that leg a little quad stretch. Oh, I've got no balance today. Drop it down. Left hand comes in. This time, right hand comes to the sacrum. Open up to the side of your mat and then release the left leg. See if you can reach back, take hold of the foot. I cannot do this today. I haven't done it for a while. <laughs> Quad stretch there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> There's me asking you to do it. <laughs> And nice and slowly release. Good. Look forward. Walk the feet all the way to the front of your mat. Take a nice lift here. Elbows come to the thighs. Sway left, sway right. And then take a malasana. Exhaling. Again, moving left, moving right. Don't have to just go straight into a squat. Again, find freedom of movement to get there. Come back into the center, keep moving. Breathe out, release the hands, lift the hips, heel, toe, feet into parallel and exhale into a fold. Bend the knees if you need to. Sway the head left and right, take hold of the elbows. Nice and slowly roll up through the spine. Come all the way to stand. And just come to the front of your mat. Well, let's do a little bit of work into the feet. So I'm going to face you here. So just find parallel with the feet. Make sure that the heels aren't in towards one another or too far out. Just start to lift a heel at a time. Good. And then you can start to transfer the weight. So dropping heel as you raise toe. Then that starts to lift the foot and the knee. So it's a little bit of a prance. That gets a little bit higher, slow and steady. Think about when you land so it's not boof. Oof, it's nice and light. Oh, gone right off course. My dancing pony. <laughs> a 
nice and light lift, slow it down, good, and then come back into center, lifting up right leg, big, big squeeze in towards the chest, rotate through the ankle there, good, we're going to push that right leg back, uh, oh, I'm going to come this side, I'm going to push that right leg back into your gentle, soft warrior three, push it back, Drop it to the mat nice and gently. Reach it back through your reverse warrior. Nice and soft. You put in the effort here. Could be very, very soft effort. Release it forward through warrior two. That's it. Left hand goes to the knee. You come into your side angle pose. And then your right arm drops to the mat as you turn on your back foot, opening up into twisted lunge. From your twisted lunge, you step all the way back into three-legged dog. So your left leg lifts up towards the sky. Open up the hip there into that kicking donkey. And then place the foot between the hands into a high lunge. We're going to step forward into a tree pose. So right leg comes up into tree. Find the stillness. Find the balance. Take a breath or two just to pause after that vinyasa. It can be soft or energetic. You choose today. Now we're going to go into a half moon pose. So that right leg extends back behind you. Left hand comes down towards the mat. Right arm lifts up towards the sky. Opening up into a chapasana if you want, taking hold of that right foot. Nice and slowly exhale into a full fold. Release it down. We lift up into an upward salute. The hands go back and the gaze goes to the sky. We circle the arms and this time we lift up onto the tiptoes, balancing. We lower the heels. We step with the right leg into a goddess pose. So toes are out, heels are facing the side of the mat. We exhale, we drop, we bounce. We inhale, we lift, we turn the toes inwards, the hands come to the hips, forward fold, exhale. Hands come down, wiggle the feet out if you need to there. Right arm lifts up towards the sky, nice twisted uh, wide leg fold there. And right arm comes down, left arm lifts, get. Nice and slowly, we place the hands down. We drop to the back of your mat into a side squat. And then push it through to the front, transitioning through that side squat, turning to the front of the mat into that low lunge, dropping the back knee. And then just take your time to step forward. Exhale into the fold. Press through the feet, come up through chair pose all the way up. And the hands come down by the side of the body, taking a moment to pause and breathe. Good, so that's our sequence. We take it nice and slow, nice and steady. So left knee comes in towards the chest. We give it a big squeeze. We send the left leg back through your warrior three. We drop it down to the mat nice and gently for your reverse warrior. Come through your warrior two, all the way into your side angle pose. We then turn towards the front thigh, pivoting on the back foot, opening up into your twisted lunge. From your twisted lunge, the hands come down, you frame the front foot, and the front foot then moves to the back into your kicking donkey three-legged dog. Opening up the hip just a little bit there, and then bringing that foot back through to the front. Find the high lunge. From here, we step it through into your tree pose. 
So just give yourself that lift and find the stillness in the balance trees. Arms can be wherever they need to be. You can still move those arms if you like. From here, we open up into the half moon. So left leg is open and it stays open. Right arm comes down, left arm lifts. Move through into Chapasana if you like. And then release into a fold. Exhale it all out. Roll up through the spine. You continue rolling. The hands come up into an upward salute. And then they circle back behind you. And then lift up onto the tiptoes. Find the tiptoe balance. Nice and slowly, lower the feet, lower the hands. Step back with the left foot this time. Find your goddess pose. You can drop and bounce here. Inhale, you turn the toes in, and then the hands come down to the hips. Take a full forward fold, doing great, nice and slow. Good, this time, right hand stays into the center, left hand lifts. Open up into the twist, left hand comes down, right arm reaches up, right arm comes down. Drop to the back of your mat, turning that left heel forward into your side squat. Good, transition through to the front side squat and then turn towards the front, nice low lunge. Step it forward. Press through the feet, come up through chair pose. Inhale, the arms up and exhale, hands come down. Take a moment to breathe, exhale, feel all of the body's energy working with you. Again, feeding, nutrients, oxygen, circulation, blood. Muscles working, bones working, joints working, all together, just like the forest. Nice and slowly lifting up, inhale. Exhale, melt and fold, ripple the spine, just as we did when we were seated. So chest leads, you come all the way down into the fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, release the hands, step back right, step back left, find your high plank, lower the knees nice and gently, exhaling all the way to the mat and coming all the way down into cobra and then pushing back through child's pose. Head comes to the back of the hands, take the knees wide if you need to, just sway out through the spine, take a rest. Notice how the breath feels, notice how the heart rate may have increased, but is now starting to settle. And gently lift the gaze, lift the body, and start to roll up through the spine. Come into kneeling. Bringing the knees together, hip width. Good. Take a moment again just to pause. We've had the head down, so coming up to an upright position, making sure shoulders relax away from the ears. Waist is nice and long. You're relaxing into the hips, the legs, the knees, legs, uh, lower legs, ankles and feet. Spin the legs around in front of you if you're at the back of the mat, which is most likely shuffle yourself forward. And then four of these big sweeps. So the arms go back behind you. They lift up to the sky and then you fold forward. 
over the legs. The arms sweep back by the side of the legs, lifting up, opening chest, little back bend, and then into that forward fold, releasing as you breathe out. Inhale, lift. Nice. Feel expansive on that. Feel releasing on this. And last time, we stay up. We reach the fingers, we look to the sky, we're supporting the spine, we're supporting the neck. And then the fingers can reach, reach, reach forward, way past the toes, and then come into this fold. Give yourself a little wiggle, bend the knees if you need, breathe in to lengthen, breathe out to release deeper. Remember pulling navel back towards the spine gently, not letting the belly collapse on the thighs. Deep breath. Nice and slowly, we're going to roll up. We're going to bring the right leg back with us. We're going to take it into an archer pose. So we're going to take hold of that right foot, lifting up through the body. Pulling that right knee back in towards the armpit. Nice. Good. Now we're going to take the left hand across on the outer edge of that foot. And you're going to take a nice little twist. So you can extend this right leg if you like. But it doesn't quite cross over the hip. It doesn't cross over the body. It stays in line with the hip. Lifting up, lifting up. Hand can always come to the mat behind you. Leg can stay bent. You're twisting towards the thigh. Make it nice and easy for yourself. Then nice and slowly, we place the foot across the thigh and we bend the underneath leg into your seated pigeon. Oh, nice and release there. You can gently fold over the thigh. Deep breaths, letting it go. Nice and slowly, we release that leg into a twist. So extended leg goes out and then take a twist once more towards the right thigh. This is where we get into the movement uh, from twist to twist. So your left extended leg is going to wrap up back underneath you. You're going to twist towards your left side of your mat, opening up the legs, opening up the knees, bringing it back around with the left leg in front, and then extend both legs out in front once more. Lifting up the arms back behind you, big lift through the chest, lift through the spine, reach the fingers away, and then exhale, go back into that fold, second time around. Exhaling, oh, that feels better, second time. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> nice and slowly, we bring that left leg back with us, archer pose, sitting tall through the spine. Got a 90 degree bend there. You can hold the foot or the toe, whichever feels most comfortable. Sit tall through the spine, take the right hand to the outer left foot, push the heel away and reach the arm back behind you. So again, don't cross the leg over the midline of the body. If you can, keep that heel in line with the hip. That's it. Beautiful. Nice. Hand can always come down to support you behind you. Good. Nice and slowly, we cross that left leg over the right thigh and then pull that right knee back in. Oh, for your seated pigeon to gently fold over. Nice deep exhales there. Moving into the twist, the underneath leg extends, the left foot comes down towards the mat and you take yourself towards the right thigh, opening up into the twist. Breathing, inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, deepening. The right leg then bends and you turn towards the right side of your mat, lifting up the hips, turning on the tiptoes, 
opening up the knees and the legs, and then returning back with the right leg in front for the twist, and extend the legs out in front. And then let's come into this eagle that we did a couple of weeks ago, actually. I really liked that one. So uh, Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose with the feet, lifting up the arms, crossing right arm over left, lifting up the fingers, and then exhale, reaching it forward over the feet. Reach the fingers forward away from the body, elbows away from the body. Nice. And then lift it back up, up, up. Change hands. Left arm comes across. We lift up and over. Keep reaching fingers away. Good. Nice and slowly lift up and release. Circle through the shoulders. Take your hands down to the piece, uh, two piece fingers on your big toes. Sit on the sit bones, feel lightness into the legs and the heels. See if you can take the heels away, but without collapsing through the spine. Nice, and see if you can extend right leg out and bring it back in. Left leg out and bring it back in. Both legs go out. Yeah, stay and hold and breathe and lift. <laughs> I'm trying to watch you and trying to balance in this in this uh, flying bear. Oh, keep lifting, 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 nice and slowly. Bring the heels back in together and bring the knees up. <laughs> Let's roll down. Ah, draw the knees in. Roll and massage out through the spine. Well done. So just move through the lower back, the sacrum, the pelvis, opening up the knees this time, noticing uh, how much more movement you might have in your body. I certainly do after 45, well, half, even just half an hour actually of movement has improved my mobility this morning. I felt particularly tight, so I hope that you do too. Take the legs and the arms straight up to the sky. Make sure the heels are in line with the hips. They're not coming too far forward or too far away. If they're too far away because you've got tight hamstrings, bend into the knees. Basically keep that deep, deep bend, dropping the thighs towards the chest. Lift the shoulders away from the mat so you're rounding up the shoulders, pulling the shoulder blades away from one another, reaching the fingers up, and then keep the shoulder blades nice and spread so that when you start to pull the shoulder blades down, then your middle back and your upper back can connect in towards the earth. Start to move through toes, fingers, ankles, wrists, never forgetting the extremities of our body. These are our extension through the movements that we've done when we were standing. Whether you point, flex, or let the leg, you know, be relaxed. Get into the toes, get into the knuckles of the fingers. Circle through the joints, flexing, pointing into the wrists and the ankles. And then slowly bringing the feet down. Take the feet nice and wide, dropping the knees together and take a rest in constructive rest posture. Just take a check in as you find this stillness. And even now, just after that small little bit of work into the hands and the feet, you might feel the energy that you create there through movement. Heel toe the feet into parallel, parallel with the hips. Pelvic tilts coming up, 
lifting up pubic bone, rounding through spine, rolling down through spine, pulling tailbone back underneath. So again, subtle, tiny movements. We're beginning to slow things down. We might get into a little bit of a stretch. So last time we push up through the feet and the palms all the way up into bridge. Drive the knees forward. See if you can feel nice and light in the right foot. So you start to shift the weight into the left. Take the foot, the right foot up towards the sky. Reach, reach, reach. Good. And then right leg goes down. You shift the weight into the right. Left leg becomes light and lift that one up towards the sky. Single leg bridge lifts and release it down. Lift the hips a little more. Roll the shoulders underneath you. Neck is long. And then exhale. Take this super slow roll down. So the shoulders, the upper back, the middle back, and then the lower back all come down. Take the legs long. Take a moment just to rest and breathe. Bring the hands underneath the buttocks. Bring the elbows in as close to the body as you can and then start rippling up into your fish. So dig the heels in and ripple up into fish. Now ripple down. Now ripple up. Now ripple down. Ripple up. We'll hold on the fourth one. Ripple down. Last time, come up and stay. Find the fish pose. The elbows might come in tighter towards the midline. Pull navel in. Open chest. Push the chest up towards the sky. Nice. Head might just look towards the sky or along the body. That's okay. Nice and slowly. Widen the elbows to roll yourself down. Take a moment to rest in Shavasana. Draw knees in, roll and massage out once more. This time, lift the head and the neck away from the mat, pull it back in towards the knees. See if this feels just a little bit looser. Oh, mine does, for sure. <laughs> Bringing the forehead in towards the knees. Nice big squeeze. And nice and slowly release. Take the soles of the feet together. Reclined uh, Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana. And take the hands onto the hips. Notice if a little arch has come into the lower back. Relax the hip flexors. Let the knees become heavy. Soften into the belly, the chest, the spine, the shoulders, the neck and the face. And just recall here, at the beginning of the practice, how you felt, to how you feel now, and also your own intention at the beginning of the practice. And that intention carried its way with you, even if you didn't think of the intention, it was with you. And it is with you now, and that intention can always be transferred into daily life. You can always take intentions off of the mat, back into your day. Slow, deep breaths. Maybe they are diaphragmatic breaths. Maybe they are samavriti. 
Maybe they are ujjayi. Your practice, your pranayama. Clearing and calming the mind during breath work only focuses on the breath. You don't have much room to focus on anything else. If you get pulled away, bring yourself back to your breathing rhythm. Retaining focus, remaining present, allowing the free flow of your breathing to keep you centered. And you are feeding your mind and body in these precious moments, giving yourself some time to set you up and prepare yourself for the rest of your day and the weekend to come. Pranayama is different to Shavasana. Shavasana is your relaxation, it's your reward. Pranayama is the closer before the reward. Again, only focusing on the breath, where in Shavasana you don't really focus on anything. The breath just happens and you keep focused on where you are, keeping focused on that present moment to let go. So remember that this is different to a Shavasana. You are still, in fact, working through the practice. Take a deep breath in, sigh out your exhale. Take the hands from the body nice and gently to the thighs. Lift the legs together using the hands. Try not to use the hips because they've been there for five minutes. Bring the knees together nice and gently. Take the feet wide. Relax into that constructive rest as you come out of your Supta Baddha Konasana posture. Notice how the hips, the inner thighs, outer thighs felt during and now after. And if there's anything else that you need to do, 
before we go into Shavasana, into relaxation, go ahead, do that. Or you can just simply make yourself comfortable and warm using blankets, pillows, bolsters, and just lying back in your Shavasana posture. And just letting go of all control. Let go of muscle contraction and engagement throughout the body. Let go of thoughts. Allow the breath just to happen. There's no focus needed on how you're breathing. But be more aware of your body lying down now, receiving its due reward for all the work that you have done. And I'll let you know when it's time to come back around. But for now, I will give you much deserved silence.
Begin to take some deeper breaths as you bring your awareness back from relaxation into movement through the hands, the feet, maybe releasing the head and the neck and choosing what you need to do most, whether that be stretching out the body or drawing knees in and rolling out through the spine. Taking time to roll over to one side to bring yourself back up to where we started, that comfortable seat, Sukhasana, easy seat. Bringing hands in towards the heart center. Just checking in with how you feel here, dropping shoulders away from the ears, lengthening the sides of the body, feeling the spine breathing with you, relaxing into the hips, the legs and the feet, and reminding yourself of your intention at the beginning of this practice under the darkness of the new moon and how that intention can now be transferred into daily life, into your weekend before you. And reminding yourself that everything that you need is within. And giving yourself some time and some space and some peace and quiet for the answers to be revealed and for you to listen to. Always thanking yourself. I thank you. Namaste.